I turn, the wind and the rain stinging my cheeks and frown. I don't know what I'm expecting. For some reason, my heart is beating just a little louder than usual. Adrenaline? It isn't every day you encounter a mysterious young girl on a bridge in the dark. The situation sounds like something from a novel. What kind of novel I haven't decided yet? I'll make up my mind when I see her face. If she has long black hair, pale skin, it's probably a horror story. If she has blonde hair and blue eyes, maybe a romance. Oh god, this guy. He sounds more like a writer than he does a, a, a musician. But as it turns out, this girl is a mixture of both. There we go. She's short, far shorter than me. Well, I knew that already since I could feel her breath against the base of my neck when she held her hands against my eyes. But I still don't know who she is. At least I don't think I do. There's something vaguely familiar about her face, the shape of her nose, the arc of her brows. But those points are neb nebulous, difficult to pin down with any kind of clarity. Her hair is dark, cut into a neat bob. Her eyes are bright green and small, mischievous smile cross, plays across her face like a cat's that just caught a mouse. Would that make me a mouse? For some inexplicable reason, I feel a chill go down my spine. And not because of the cold, there's something odd about this girl that I can't quite put my fingers on. Something uncannily familiar, but disconcertingly alien. But I don't know her. I'm sure I don't know her. If I'd have met something with bright green eyes like that flickering against halogen lamps, I think I'd remember. Normal people don't have eyes like that. I'm sorry, but I really don't think we've met before. This must be some kind of mistake. And I already said it isn't. I know you already, Robin Harkins. Hawkins. So she knows my name. How does she, how does she know my name? But she doesn't answer my question. She can't. I forgot to say it out loud. She takes one step forward and peers at me. Her eyes are large, all-encompassing like twin gas planets. Oh, God. It's got the heartbeat the funk going. My head starts to pound. I feel dizzy. I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you f for such a long time. I want to tell you something, something really important. Apparently I got an achievement for this. <laughs> uh, I think I'm in love with you. Oh no. So saying, the girl stands on the tip of her toes and presses her soft kiss, kiss places a soft kiss against my cheek. Her movements are so gentle and tender I could almost kid myself into believing we're estranged lovers reunited on this bridge for the first time in 15 years. But that can't be. I don't know how old this girl is, but there's a good chance she might not even be 15 yet. As for myself, I've been married to Sally for longer than that. Ah... Uh... The thought of Sally is enough to put me back to my senses more effectively than a slap across the face. I I'm sorry, but... I take a hold of the girl's shoulders, frighteningly bony, and push her away. <laughs> she doesn't look surprised by my manhandling. Woman handling? Teenage handling? Help me out here. Instead, she stares at me, eyes unblinking, to be honest, kind of unnerving. I can't deny that I'm flattered by the attention what middle-aged man wouldn't be. But at the same time, I'm confused, anxious, and a little bit more than disturbed. W what on earth was all that about? Uh, w why? Just who are you, anyways? Don't you remember? I thought that might jog your memory. Not that we've ever kissed before, but that would have been weird. I really don't know one of my older students. Do you usually let your students kiss you? Uh, of course not. Oh, good. I'm happy. I'm the only one. I can get awful jealous, you know. But, but I, uh, that doesn't help me out. I still don't know why. All right, all right, fine. I see where we're not getting, we're not going or to get anywhere without a bit of a push. Uh oh. 
She smiles, her eyes sparkling like precious jewels. First hydrogen planets, now jewels. This girl's eyes are an ever-changing mystery, a source of so many similes that I've almost taken on my mythical properties. It's inevitable. I've never seen a person with eyes like these before. In that case, there's just no way. How can that be possible? But it is. Is he finally realizing it's probably the cat? I step back, my, eye, my back collides against the wrought iron railings and cold seeps through my jacket into my skin. The girl stands in front of me, smiling coyly as though she hasn't done something shocking. There, glowing right out of her scalp, are a pair of ears, or growing right out of her scalp, are a pair of ears, a set of twitching black eyes lined with white fur that resemble, that tremble in the cold. Cat ears. Cat eyes. A cat's tail, too, peeking out from beneath the hem of her dress. This must be a dream. This has to be a dream. The sudden kiss would have been enough of a giveaway, but the scene playing out before my eyes has transcended the border of possible but improbable and right into the congratulations you've gone insane territory maybe I've been outside longer than I thought it must be cold I'm seeing things what other explanation is there this, this can't be real there's just no way do you know who I am now um slowly stupidly I open my mouth and say the very first thing that comes into my head bell the girl's face lights up, wreathed with smiles. That's right, I'm Belle, your great Aunt Clarice's cat. Oh, God. <clears throat> of course that makes sense, doesn't it? It's Belle. She comes back to thank me for trying to save her, though she didn't need saving to begin with. That's just how the world works. Those who do good deeds will get rewarded eventually. I think there's something about it in the Bible. I don't know if there's anything about cat girls in there, though. Granted, I never paid much attention to the RE at school. So I can't be sure. I'm no priest. Falling into that river during my formative years must have scarred me more than I thought. And yet, despite my belief that this must be some kind of near-death-induced dream, the girl, or Belle, should I say, doesn't disappear. Doesn't even flicker. She remains stubbornly solid, leaning her elbows against the iron railings as she stares out into the starry sky. If it weren't for the ears and the tail, she would look like an ordinary girl. An ordinary girl who kisses middle-aged men in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, I suppose that isn't so unusual, not really. Lots of girls do things like that. Some even make livings out of it. Oh, references. But this isn't the same. I know it's not the same. I'm really a cat, you see. I, I can tell that much. Maybe you can now, but you were totally taken in before, right? Your, you, your great aunt Clarice, your parents, and everyone really. It was a very convincing disguise, the best Halloween costume I've ever seen. <laughs> Thanks. I managed to fool all of you humans, but the other cats were less convinced. They must have known, or some dis on some instinctive level, that I was one wasn't one of their own. That's probably why they didn't like me, didn't want me to come near me. True enough, Great Aunt Clarice's other cats, Smoky, Minton, Snowdrop, Jasper, and Eric, never went near Belle. I always thought it was just a cat thing. My body was that of a cat, but I was more than that. I've always been more. Oh, gosh. You said all all you humans. Does that mean you're not human? How perceptive of you. She grins. And how many humans do you know that can disguise themselves as a black cat for years upon years? Well, maybe not a black one specifically, but... <laughs> you're funny. You're so freaked out right now that you're trying hard to make jokes. I like it. Christ. I run a hand through my hair. It's damp and it clumps together in spikes. Water trickles down my forehead. This is ridiculous. How can a cat be also be a girl? I don't understand. It's probably easiest to think of me as neither. I'm not a cat nor a girl. 
Then what are you? Words begin to flit through my mind, none of them particularly flattering. Well, Squamous, Eldritch, Abomination. I'm actually, um, how can I phrase it? I'm supposed to say spirit, but you humans might say other harsher things like demon, devil, or maybe monster. Monster? Not too far from abomination then. At least you didn't say elder god. I was taken on the form of a cat out of necessity for a while. I didn't really want to, but I had no choice. I was too weak to assume a human form at the time, so I had to settle for something smaller. What do you mean you were too weak? I can't explain it right now. It's a long and boring story, and you probably wouldn't understand. Probably not. I can't even understand the made-up sci-fi jargon of Doctor Who. So why would I even be able to wrap my head around something like this? Hey, don't diss Doctor Who. The original, the original Doctor Who is good. And the new stuff, mm, not bad either, but still. Third Doctor was my favorite. Was it? Uh, no, it wasn't Third Doctor. Was he? Was it Third Doctor? I can't remember. Anyways, let's get back to the story. Tom Baker. That was the Third Doctor, I think, or was it the fifth? It's a hard time. There's so many. There's like 12 to 15 different doctors now. So for me trying to remember all the different ones. But yeah, the person who played Tom Baker, which I think is the third doctor, is my favorite. Moving on. Do you remember when I fell into the lake in Cl Clarice's garden? I wasn't paying attention really. Lost in my own world. When you're a cat and you can't communicate with anyone, daydreaming is all you can do to pass the time. Of course I remember. I almost died. <laughs> I suppose you have a point. You humans only have one after all. I take it you spirits or whatever it is you are have more? She taps a finger against her nose, that teasing smile flittering about her face. Now, now, that would be telling. A woman has to have some secrets. I thought you said you weren't a girl. I'm not. There's a big, big difference between girl and a woman. Oh, she's flirting. All right, fine. I won't pry. But I still can't wrap my head around all this. Good boy. Oh, no. I don't appreciate that condescending tone. I am 42. And yet, despite your age, you are nothing more than a child compared to me. Damn. Just how old is this girl? Sorry, woman. If we first met when I was six, she must have been considerably head start. I mean, she must have had a considerably head start on me. Isn't it rude to ask a later her age, though? I was so happy when you tried to help me back then. I mean, I wasn't in any danger, but the fact that a human risked their life in order to aid me was really touching. It wasn't touching. It was stupid. Don't be too hard on yourself. I appreciate it. People aren't very nice to us spirits, even when we masquerade as something else. Though they can never tell the difference, I think they can sense it. Mm, it might be true. My parents were never too struck on, struck on Belle. Neither was I. I wonder why, though. What are the general duties of your average run-of-the-mill spirit? Meeting out death, ferrying souls, heralding the apocalypse, all the above? If that's the case, it's no wonder people are suspicious of her. I vowed ever since that day when I had regained enough strength to take on a human form, I would find you and thank you. It has become my mission, my reason for living, as it were. I I'm flattered, but you don't need to go that far. But I did. At the time, I really, really did. I needed something to care about, something to strive for. I've been a cat for so long, I was almost beginning to lose my sense of self. I was starting to forget who I was, and that's a very dangerous thing for a spirit. Beings like me can take on other forms whenever we want, depending on how strong we are. But if we remain in one form for too long and forget about our true selves, we'll be stuck. I was this close. She holds up her thumb and forefinger. The distance between them is minute. Microscopic. Too forgetting. To condemning myself to live in a life of a common house cat for the rest of my life. A life that would have ended far, far too fast. 
Cats don't live for nearly as long as a spirit can. No, I... I can't imagine they would be able to. Just what am I talking about? I have no idea what I'm saying. I've never met a spirit before, so I have nothing to compare this girl's world's words to. And no way of verifying her statements. I'm just saying that I think she wants to hear. Trying to make her feel better. Over the course of the last five minutes, I've come to realize something. I don't like what it is. I don't like it when she frowns. I'm glad you tried to save me, Robin. It woke me up from my stupor. Shook me by the shoulders, metaphorically, of course, because cats don't have shoulders, until all the lethargy accumulated over the years fell away. I'd almost forgotten it was an act. I'd almost forgotten myself. You made me remember, made me remember who I really am. You didn't save me from drowning, you saved me in a different way. <laughs> You saved my identity. You saved not my physical body, but my sense of self. That's why I want to thank you so much. I'd be nothing more than a dead kitty, a stone-cold cat carcass, if it weren't for you. I wouldn't be able to talk, cry, or laugh. I wouldn't even have as posable thumbs. <laughs> True. Belle holds up her hands, bending each of the fingers in turn like a child showing off an art project to a parent. So, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Thank you from the very bottom of my heart. She looks at me earnestly, her green eyes intense. I shiver. It feels like an invisible ghostly hand is brushing up against every single vertebrae of my spine. I look away, flustered by her forthright honesty and run a hand through my hair. I really am a typical man. Bad feelings carved by confusion. Ah, well, you already said thank you, so you don't need to kiss me. What was that about? Was that some kind of gratitude? Partially, maybe. It's because I realized something, something crucial. And what was that? Saying thank you wasn't enough, not after you helped me so much. You helped me more than you could ever know. Her eyes flash like faulty green street lights, street lamps, harsh and intense. I can see streaks of bright green pressed up against the, up close against my eyelids when I blink, burnt into my skull. You almost gave your life to help me. Now I want to return the favor. I eye her suspiciously. And how are you going to do that? With that, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here before we continue. I think it's been pretty pretty lengthy. And I'm going to probably... I'm not wanting to do this in an entirely one run. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and save this, and um, we will return here in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this. It was fun reading it. The English was very easy. It was fairly well written and easy to get into. So I look forward to seeing where this goes. Um, again, it is more than it seems. So... We're going to see where the story takes us in the next episode. So for now, cheers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one again. Until next time.